Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back along to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon. I'm coming to you on my travels. Uh, got back from the Stade Bolaire at around about 4.30 a.m. this morning, had a quick cup of coffee and um, had to set off for Stansted Airport, where I'm at currently, uh, ahead of a flight out to Porto uh, for Porto versus Barcelona in the Champions League tonight. So, uh, back-to-back Champions League nights for me in two different countries, which is always challenging, but um, yeah, really, really looking forward to it. Um, we're going to be discussing that disappointing defeat at the hands of Lens in the UEFA Champions League. Um, I have to start off by saying what an incredible atmosphere um, that I experienced in the Stade Bolaire. Now, obviously, the result didn't go our way. The game didn't go the way we wanted it to, etc., etc. But, um, you know, it was a great experience and, and I'm sure most Arsenal fans that made the journey will have enjoyed their trip outside of the 90 minutes um, of football that we saw. Look, really disappointing result in the end, really disappointing outcome. There's lots to get into. Um, it is going to be a slightly shorter episode because I am on my travels, as I say, need to catch a plane, all the rest of it. Um, but, you know, I wanted to start off with the team selection because I think there was a lot of debate in the build-up to the game how was Mikel Arteta going to approach it I was one of those people as well that you know was expecting to see a bit more rotation than we got um, obviously what do I know because we turned up against a long side um, we played pretty much our first team and they were really really competitive and they were able to take all three points from us so I think in some ways Mikel Arteta's team selection was vindicated by what we saw and how things unfolded in the end the atmosphere as I say was was electric I think that played a big part in the game as well people will say you know if you want to play at the highest level and you want to play in the big competitions and you want to play in the big games you need to be able to block that stuff out you need to be able to cope with that type of thing but it was very very intimidating inside the Stabile they were there from way before kickoff there was um, you know a big cheer when Lons came out for their warm-up there were jeers that lasted minutes when Arsenal came out uh, to do their warm-up there was all sorts of, um, of sort of contributions made by the Lawn supporters and I think they really were I know we use this cliche a lot they really were the 12th man for their side um, we're going to come on to talk about Bukayo Saka in a bit because I know that's hot on everybody's kind of agenda at the moment and I've had a few questions come in uh, via Twitter or X as it's now known this morning about that so we'll address that uh, in a bit but in terms of the team selection just to kind of finish off on that uh, yeah, look, I think I would have made more changes uh, given the game that we've got coming up on Sunday. I think a lot of people felt that way going into the game. There were a lot of people that also said, look, it's the UEFA Champions League and you have to take this seriously because if you get caught sleeping, you can be punished. And, and that proved to be the case even with our best team. So really, in a lot of ways, it was the worst possible scenario because not only did you increase the workload of some of your key players who were maybe touch and go if they were able to make the game um, on the Saturday just gone which is obviously not ideal um, so not only have you sort of put extra workload on them but they've also lost and you've also lost so you didn't get the result that would have justified playing all of those players um, and ultimately you got a bit of a stinker of a performance I thought some people said that we made more than enough chances to win the game I think we made just about enough chances to win the game um, but I never really felt like we were creating much I never really felt like we were in a place where we could score at any moment. I have to say, once Lawrence equalised, I felt like it was going to be an uphill battle. And yeah, we had a couple of chances after that, but I was never convinced we were going to go on and win the game. For all of the factors that I've mentioned, the team just didn't perform on the night. Too many individuals, not at the level that we know they can be. I thought they played out of their skin. I thought they defended fantastically. And as I keep saying, and maybe I'm overplaying it in some people's eyes, but I thought the atmosphere played a massive, massive part as well. Let's start off um, with uh, Gabby Jesus' goal, which obviously put Arsenal in front. I thought it was a really, really good finish from him. Uh, obviously, it came from a mistake, but Kyo Saka uh, picking up a loose ball, feeding it into Jesus, who I thought did really, really well to take the shot early. Caught the goalkeeper out a little bit, I felt. Um, didn't allow him to set himself and, and cover his angles and, and managed to find the far corner as a result of that. And, and from that point, you think, you know what, we could go on and, and have a pretty comfortable evening here. And the reason I say that is because the atmosphere went from 
up here to, to really flat um, for a few minutes. But once the game got restarted again, you know, the Lons fans were kind of waiting for that moment to really get behind their team again and to really ignite the place again. And um, to score, what, 10, 11 minutes after we did really had that effect. Um, brilliant goal from them. Um, wonderful control out of the air from El Yawahi. And then I think to have the presence of mind to realise that he couldn't wait for the ball to drop before the layoff because it would have killed the opportunity, basically. And pick out his teammate the way he did, who finished exquisitely, uh, means that was a really, really good goal. And, and while everybody was sort of focusing on David Raya's mistake, or his loose pass towards Tommy Asu, which ultimately led to the turnover in possession, which then led to the goal. I was very much saying to, to my friends that I was with, what a piece of control and what an, a stunning finish. This is the Champions League. You play against top quality opposition, this is what can happen. Um, if you don't A, take your chances, and B, if you give away cheap opportunities, which we did by giving the ball away. I never really thought that David Raya recovered from that error last night. Um, he didn't do anything else particularly bad after that, but I think he went into his shell a little bit. Um, I noticed that while sort of Lons was celebrating, there was a, a conversation going on between him, Gabriel and Zinchenko, where you kind of got the gist that they were saying, like, what the hell was that pass? Um, you know, yes, there's a time and place where we want to play through the lines and we're gonna see, we want to see your distribution um, be that little bit more adventurous and that little bit more brave but that is not a time to be doing it and after that you felt like he was just yeah just a little bit reluctant and and playing within a shell and playing within himself a little bit so yeah I think that had a bit of an impact and you've got to remember like he, yeah he's experienced he's what 27 years old 28 years old whatever he is and people talked about the fact that he was coming in as an experienced goalkeeper he's not experienced at this level though you know he's not a Champions League goalkeeper um, he's not been a Champions League goalkeeper historically, so the occasion may well have overwhelmed him as well. Um, yeah, um, I, I just, yeah, yeah, haven't seen what I want to see yet from him to give me confidence that we've made the right decision in replacing Aaron Ramsdale. Competition, I'm all for, but it doesn't feel like it's competition right now because it feels like David Raya gets the nod in all the biggest games. And as I keep saying, I don't think I've seen enough yet to say this is the right call from Mikel Arteta the second goal um, that we ended up conceding was one where once again we got caught out in the left back position pushed our left back into midfield um, too much space on that side of the pitch and we no longer have the protection for Zinchenko that allows him to play the way he did last season and minimise the amount of times that we get caught out as a result of it yeah we got caught out with it at points last season but generally speaking we were much better protected in that position. Why? Because we had Granit Xhaka. We had a player who was happy to do that, instinctively did that, and brought a better balance to the midfield. Now, people will point at Kai Havertz and say he was rubbish and, you know, why have we brought him in and he's upset the balance of the team and all the rest of it. And people often put the blame on him. I would say this. He's not the one that decided to change the balance in our midfield. As a decision taken by Mikel Arteta. He replaced a really key part of our midfield with a very different part that has a completely different functionality. The fact that there's that imbalance on that side now for me is on him rather than any individual that plays there, whether that be Havertz, Vieira or Emil Smith-Rowe. I feel the same way about that. So yeah, big frustration for me. I have to say that. And of course, another major, major disappointment was the injury picked up by Bukayo Saka. As soon as he went down, you knew he wasn't going to continue. You knew he needed to go off. Um, we don't really know the full extent of it at this moment in time. Mikel Arteta, after the match, said it didn't look good. Gary Cottrell of Sky said there's a feeling that it's not that bad. So I don't know what to believe. Mikel Arteta playing mind games ahead of Sunday? Maybe. Who knows? But it's brought up this whole debate again, hasn't it, of Bukayo Saka and the management of him. Are we mismanaging him? And I think you can make a case that says that. You know, I know you want to play your best players all the time. And I know that the best players will need to be able to play two, three times a week. That's how it works. That's how it works at the very, very high level. But when a player has gone off injured in three consecutive games, you have to start to question if physically they're up to it at this moment in time. If he needs a breather, if he needs a break. Um, again, I go back to the team selection point. I don't think you can kill Mikel Arteta for picking him given that we lost the game so I don't think you can kill him for wanting to pick his best team against a side that many of us thought were going to offer far less of a challenge than they actually did I think actually his selection was vindicated but the overall question around the mismanagement of Saka I think is a valid one 
Um, and let's hope that he's fit for Sunday. Um, let's hope that the international break gives him an opportunity to just wind it down a little bit. Um, you know, if he isn't fit on Sunday, then you'd assume that that means he's not available for the international break, which might do him good in the long run, but doesn't help our chances really of beating City at the weekend. We talked a lot about Rodri's absence and what that means for this fixture. But if Saka's out and we're without one of our main men, then that kind of nullifies that a little bit, doesn't it? But yeah, it's a big question. You know, is Mikel putting too much on him? Is it down to Bakayo as well to say, look, I'm not feeling right at the moment. I need this time. We know that he wants to play. We know that he wants to play in the Champions League. We know that he wants to play in the Premier League to keep his run going and all the rest of it. But sometimes as a manager, um, you probably have to take that decision out of the player's hands. And it, for me, he didn't look fit uh, from the beginning. Neither did Trossard on the other side. And um, we just had very little threat in those wide areas prior to him coming off. And obviously... Um, after his uh, departure uh, as well fingers crossed it's not too bad but is there a case that says that we're overusing him yes absolutely there absolutely is 100 percent um apologies for any background noise or music or anything like that um i am in the airport waiting uh, to catch my flight so um yeah it's um it's a, very much an episode on the move here today and it is going to be a bit shorter than normal as a result of that we'll do one tomorrow with more time more questions uh, all the rest of it um but yeah I, I mean disappointed deflated obviously when you make that trip as well it, it feels a bit worse i think because um you know you've committed so much time and effort and expense to it and then you're coming home with a face like a slapped ass essentially so it's not nice um but is it the end of the world? No. With the two other sides in the group drawing, we still sit second in the group. We're only one point off top. I'm not too concerned about it. I think at home, we're more than capable of, of beating all of these sides comfortably, as we showed against PSV Eindhoven. On our travels, though, it's a different ball game. They're all very difficult, atmospheric places to go to. On paper, people would have said that Lens was the easiest place to go to of the three, I think. Um, but judging by what I saw there in terms of the atmosphere, I, I don't necessarily think that we've read that right. Um, I expect a great atmosphere at the Ramon Sanchez at Pichuan as well, the home of Sevilla, and the same uh, at the Philips Stadion in Eindhoven. But Lons was never going to be an easy game. And if we thought it was, and I have to say I was guilty of this. If you look at the team that I picked on the preview, I wanted to rotate way more um, than Mikel Arteta actually did. And I was proved wrong because they were good enough to hurt us. They were good enough to punish us. They were good enough uh, to take advantage of the fact that we weren't at anywhere near our best. But the big frustration is the nature of the goals we conceded. The fact that we had a couple of guilt-edged opportunities as well in the game that we weren't good enough to take um, on the night. And um, and yeah, you know, it's it's the kind of defeat that you don't really want going into a big game like Sunday's. It's a, it's a morale beater. Um, Declan Rice said after the game it's a good thing because we can learn from it and it's only a good thing if you do take a learn from it and move forward with it I want to see Partey come back into the midfield for Sunday I want to see him sit alongside Rice I want to see Odegaard given that little bit more license as a result of that because I think you know we've shown that we're easily exposed when we play this way with the Havertz Odegaard double thing whether it's Odegaard, Vieira, Odegaard, Havertz, Odegaard, Smith, it's the same thing for me. It's about the balance. It's not about the quality of these individual players. So lessons learned for me. Hopefully the team have learned some lessons and hopefully the managers learned some lessons and we can go out there on Sunday and be very, very competitive against a really good Manchester City side. But look, overall feeling a disappointment. Concern over Bakayo Saka, of course. Players that I thought gave a good account of themselves last night. Declan Rice. Um, William Saliba, Gabriel, players that didn't give a good account of themselves. Odegaard, Trossard, Havertz as well. Um, Tommy Asu didn't look great for me either defensively. So, um, and, and obviously missed that great chance as well. So, yeah, lots to think about. Um, thank you for tuning in. I know it's a short episode, a bit rushed and all the rest of it. Please do leave uh, a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave us a review if you're listening on audio as well. It really does help. And I'll catch you all soon. Until then, goodbye.